me, Core Energy Coach, who is every single Thursday, Tuesday, Monday, and Wednesday together with Bethany, helping you get your shit together so you can break free from the mental prison that you find yourself in and live a fulfilling life that you are proud of and excited to wake up to every single day, no matter what happens. <laughs> Even when it's tough, even when you don't feel like waking up, you still have that zest where you're, you just feel excited to wake up and get your day started. So the topic that I have for you guys for today is, let me pull it up so that way I have it right in front of me and I say it the proper way as it is showing up on, um, a description for you what happens when we chase perfection so we're going to talk about what happens when we chase that perfection and what role does your good girl mold play in that chase good morning Michiko. i literally just started doing this video uh, not today can we talk after thank you um okay so i'm going to repeat the topic again for you and for myself what happens when we chase perfection so we're going to talk about that and anything that's coming up for you that you have experienced what has happened in your life uh, the advantages and disadvantages the positive and the negative when you chase perfection because we all chase perfection something that it, it's an illusion it doesn't exist but in a way, it does exist because it is some kind of a standard that we set up for ourselves in our mind that this right here is what perfection is. And when we reach and get to that perfection, what happens then? That standard, that limit changes. So we continuously can find ourselves in this perpetual cycle of chasing perfection. And what role does your good girl mold play in that chase because she's playing a role in there as well she's always there um, a lot of the parts of this good girl mold you might not be aware of and some of the other parts that you are aware of and that you're working on that and if you need a little bit of more help and and uncovering this good girl mold that you have and start to break free from that mold then i want to take a, a moment to invite you to a free five-day challenge that uh, we are starting in uh, a Facebook group that is called Breaking Free from the Good Girl Mold. You'll see the post that has been pinned by Bethany to the top of the group. In this group, and if you're listening to this uh, podcast, this video, this audio on a, at a different time, then you can go and check out any one of my profiles and you'll see it um, in my bio or my profile description. You'll see the link to the group and you can check out and see if we are running that challenge or not in case you're checking this out at a later time but we're starting it on monday and it's going to be running uh, up until friday so monday february 5th to fr friday february 9th and it's free for the five days where i will take you through step by step and help you to uncover this good girl mold that you have and you'll you'll get to see how perfection plays a role in that as well so Let's talk about what happens when we chase perfection and you'll see how the good girl is coming through for you as well. First of all, like I started talking about perfection, the fact that it doesn't exist and yet it does exist because it's this elusive illusion and elusive standard that we each have when it comes to different areas, different parts of our life. So what are some of these areas or parts of your life or parts of yourself or your traits or personalities that you are chasing that you are after that you are working on and in in the standard that you have within each and every part that is to you perfection so for example we can start with the self image what does perfect hair look and looks and feels like to you 
there is some kind of expectation there is some kind of a standard so having that high standard which is perfection itself uh, what about the body what is a perfect body a lot of us good girls we don't believe we have a good body so we're chasing this this high standard of what this perfect body is and even when we reach it we still feel like it's not perfect enough it's not good enough so we continue to chase it chase it and chase it that's the positive side of it and that also can be the negative side of this high standard that we have then what about the house different parts of the house what about how you are who you are your skills your personality traits how does perfection play a role in all of those what about your kids are your kids perfect or are you trying to help them to become perfect? There's going to be moments where you feel like they're perfect and then there's going to be other moments where you realize that there is another level that they can to get to and reach and have and attain. But it's your standard, your definition of perfection for your kids, for yourself, for the different parts of yourself. So setting those high standards and setting those things that we want to be perfect in the things that we want to have in our life that we consider to be perfect it is actually very it's like having goals and having dreams having standards it is actually a positive because by having those things in place your drive can increase you drive towards excellence you drive towards perfection in order for us so what role does chasing perfection play and the reason why i came up with this topic today was it plays a role that helps us to reach greatness that's why the high standard where we identify with perfection is what uh what would a perfect life be like versus what we currently are living and in identifying the perfection part we are striving and working towards greatness greatness for us what that means for us for somebody else it might be it usually is different some things might align with what perfection and greatness means and look like looks like to you whereas for other people it, they ha they're living a different life and they it would be similar but yet different so high standard high standards another positive is that by having these high standards these um, these goals these dreams that you have you can find yourself being very driven and motivated and inspired to go after them but here is the kicker and I've gone through this myself as well is that they need to be realistic that when we set the standard of perfection the standard for greatness and this is where the good girl comes in is that in order for you to get to that point to let's say a person that you want to be and become the uh, the mother that you want to be the business owner that you want to be the partner that you want to be in order for you to get there there is a lot of reshaping and remolding you gotta do and of yourself that you gotta overcome that might feel unattainable and impossible to reach and overcome and get to so it might feel entirely unrealistic because it's so out of character so out of who you are and where you are right now that even by having these high standards it's important to have that realistic check-in can i get there and obviously you can the answer is yes you can get to wherever you want to but then the realistic check would be can i get there within a year if the answer is yes then great how would you get there and the answer is no okay can I get there in two years three years five years realistically where I want to get to this perfection that I want to have in my life or perfection that I want to be in my life when can I get there 
and what's going to happen when something, what am I going to do uh, when something gets in the way? Because life is fun that way. Things always are, you know, opportunities for growth always come through. And here we are playing at life. Hey, Rebecca, how are you doing? Beautiful. I see the comments on here. I'm going to read them in a moment. So that way everybody else gets to hear them as well. So motivation, the perf the motivation that we have when we are chasing perfection, when we're chasing our goals and we're chasing our dreams can be a powerful, powerful motivator in achieving them. But this is where the good girl comes in and that she struggles to celebrate you. She struggles to celebrate herself and these achievements. She starts to see all the things that she's not deserving of, not good enough, not ready for yet. And then the motivation disappears and she just feels like crap. I have been there. I have done that. All the things that I'm talking about, I have lived through those things. And this is why this uh, five day challenge is in place just to help you start understanding that mold and start to break free from that mold. Um, you also start to, so what you're also going to be doing is you're going to start to pay attention to detail because by taking time to understand what it is that you want, what perfection is, uh, with this part, this aspect of your life, you're going to identify those little itty bitty parts that will bring you towards that perfection that will help you to identify what that perfection is, what that greatness is. And, um, um, yeah, and then that'll be the, the thing that helps you to get there. Rebecca says, I think when we achieve, we feel rewarded. Therefore, it inspires us to continue to achieve. Yes, it definitely does. But there are certain times or moments when we don't even recognize those achievements. And that is the good girl in us where we don't allow ourselves to either recognize it or celebrate it and really what we're doing there is we're minimizing ourselves and our success and our achievements and it happens so often that we fail to recognize that we fail to catch it and it happens uh, sometimes on a daily basis and i say sometimes it's i mean by uh what i mean by that is that for some of us, we experience this on a daily basis where no matter what seems to happen, that we feel good about our achievement, but we feel good only for a little bit and then we go back to the not good enough, not deserving, not ready, not yet, and punishing ourselves through it. And Rebecca says we have to uh, do the things to continue to achieve and be successful as we evolve the standards increase and stakes are higher and required effort will increase yeah so what you're saying there is that this um, this perfection that we have taken time to identify that we want to have what perfection is to us when it comes to let's say motherhood what a perfect mother is that when we reach that perfection that standard that level that we at some point have identified that that itself that line that expectation rises itself and it changes and it becomes a little bit different and then we are back to chasing and reaching that again. It's continuously redefining perfection with all the different parts of our life and continuously chasing and reaching 100% exactly what we're talking about here today. And, and where the good girl comes in is that she starts to become tired of the journey itself because it starts to become too much. And the reasons for that is because she's trying to do everything on her own and not asking for help, not asking for guidance, not accepting help. And yes, maybe hearing the guidance, but because there's so many things on her 
uh, on her to-do list, on her dream list, on her goal list, on her task list, on her wants list, on all of these different lists that she has. There's so many things on there that, like Rebecca says, it becomes overwhelming, 100%, that it becomes overwhelming, that she loses the drive and the journey itself becomes too much because everything is on her plate and she feels like she's carrying the world on her shoulders often resulting in neck pain migraines shoulder aches and pains upper back uh, pains and soreness and stiffness for no apparent reason at all uh, but the reason is is that you're literally carrying the world on your shoulders and it hurts and then a lower back pain when you're out of alignment when you're not in alignment with your goals, your dreams, your perfections, the, the things that you're chasing that you're after. And yeah. And you feel overwhelmed and stressed and burnt out. You can find yourself wanting or just not wanting, but needing to cry or starting to cry, which feels like for no apparent reason. It's like I have everything is great. Everything is perfect in my life, but yet I don't know why I feel so sad and I want to cry and I need to cry. And it's because you are trying to be a good girl and normalize all the things that you are responsible for, all the things that you're doing that you are not actually living in alignment with who you are and what you actually want and what is meant to be for you. That it's everything for everyone else but not for you uh, Rebecca says all my current symptoms it's like it's like I know a couple of things or two <laughs> about what it means to be a good girl and living a life of a good girl and then breaking free from those shackles from that mold and you know the shattering of, um, shattering the mold of a good girl uh, yeah I think I, I might know a thing or two. Um, I lived that life. I lived in in pain and physical pain, but it was emotional pain that turned into physical pain, and they coexist. Uh, so there's internal turmoil as well, with feeling like you're spiraling. That there's a lot of things happening. That there's a lot of responsibilities, and the feeling of not having enough time for anything or anyone and struggling to juggle and balance um, your day-to-day, -day, your family day-to-day, -day, and yourself and your well-being. Um, just to reiterate uh, the things that I've talked about on many other um, videos as well. So then you will find yourself on, the, like we were talking about, when you have that uh, perfection the standard you will be continuously improving yourself continuously working on yourself continuously working on the personal development or personal growth or the self-love or self-care or certain personality traits that you want to change within yourself because in order for you to live the life that you want to you cannot be the same person because if that was true then you would already be living that life so that means in order for you to have the life that you want, you cannot be the same person. You cannot bring her there. You need to grow and evolve. Um, you're, you will become more goal-oriented, more driven. Um, perfectionism may lead to a successful attainment of uh, some of the challenging goals and dreams that you have. And the difference between goal and dream, I'll just... Um, the reason why I keep them separate, and this is what really has helped me to understand what is a goal and what is a dream, and putting it accordingly on my uh, on my plans. So a goal is something that you have already achieved, that you've attained, and now you just want to up it up. So perfection. With certain things that you have, for example, initially, before you became a mother, it was your dream to become a mother. And then when you became a mother, there are certain parts of being a mother. Let's say you want to become a mother and you want to have a second, third, fourth, or a tenth kid. And that was no longer a dream. Now it moved to your goal. Like the goal was to become a mother for the second time, the third time, the fourth time. Same thing with anything that you're doing in your life. And also when it comes to perfection, where 
you became a mother and now you have the standard of what perfection is with being a mother for the first time initially might have it was a dream for you to be a perfect mother and become a mother and when you became one afterwards it continues to get to the next level to the next level to the next level and you gotta continuously redefine what that means to you sometimes especially when you're in the beginning stages of your awakening it might feel like you need to redefine these goals these standards uh every single day that's where I was doing. I was practically doing that every single day, revisiting, uh, checking and making sure that I was in alignment and they and they were in alignment with me and who I was. And little by little, I started noticing that some of these things were not even mine. They were somebody else's. These goals, these dreams, these standards of perfection that somebody else has given me. And I'm like, that is not me. And that's why in the beginning, you got to check them every single day and almost like vet them to make sure that they're still feeling in alignment and when they start to feel out of alignment then checking to see where it's coming from and perhaps maybe from who but the who doesn't really matter it's just really recognizing that's not you or not you anymore no longer in alignment scrap it put it somewhere else um Rebecca says I like the phrase I'm exactly where I'm meant to be that is a powerful reminder that I, you are exactly where you're meant to be. You are going through and experiencing what you're meant to be going and experiencing right now. Because in order for you to get to that next stage, the next level, the next thing, the next um, level of perfection, you need to go through this one. There, You can't skip levels. Even when you, it's like a video game. You don't get to skip levels when you're playing a video game. In order for you to get to the next level, you got to go through it. Maybe in a book, when you're reading a book, you can skip chapters. But when you skip chapters in the book, you might skip a lot of good lessons, uh, incredible insight, golden nuggets when you skip. And some of you, like me, uh, might have FOMO, fear of missing out, when you're reading a book and you're skipping or or skimming through a book or when you're you know when you read a book and you just zone out and you don't even know what you just read there might be something in there so i would reread until it settles until it goes in there and also recognizing that reading physically reading a book might not be for you but listening to a book might be for you for different reasons like the attention that we have is different when it comes to reading and when it comes to listening and then when it comes to listening to an audio when it comes to listening to a video so our learning styles are different a little bit or a lot depending on on us and who we are and our personality and Rebecca says when we live in alignment we can trust the journey sit back and enjoy the ride yeah and it feels like smooth sailing, um, easier to just, it's like, it might feel like we are behind the wheel, but at the same time, we're in cruise control. We're just cruising and going. And, <clears throat> and this is where perfection can come in. And it reminds us, hey, you're in cruise control. Things are too comfortable. And this is comes through usually as anxiety or feeling uh, overwhelmed or feeling like uh, emptiness and loneliness or not enoughness and that comes in to remind us that we stopped growing we stopped learning we stopped working on ourselves and we stopped chasing and working towards that perfection um, now another thing is we learn discipline we really, really, really learn discipline and we learn um, consistency as well. We learn so much when we uh, chase perfection, when we chase our goals and dreams. There's so much that we learn and perfectionists often exhibit discipline. So those people who are perfectionists, they, they are disciplined they are consistency they are dedicated to their own pursuit they're dedicated to their own growth and evolution they're dedicated to that next level this is an example of highly successful people and good girls often 
don't allow themselves. They can find themselves avoiding, procrastinating, and being distracted. Um, I refer to it when I catch myself uh, in that state. Um, I refer to it as the goldfish. It's the ADHD. <laughs> Where you're doing one thing and it's like, up oh, to the next one, up oh, to the next one, up oh, to the next one. And sometimes I call it the golden retriever. Uh, or uh, it's like, oh, squirrel. Uh, if you've seen... Um, I forgot what it's called. Um, um, I forgot what the cartoon is called. Uh, with the balloon and the young kid floating in the house with a balloon, and there's a golden retriever there that has the translator that you can understand what the dog is saying, and they'd be talking and talking, talking, and it goes, Oh, squirrel. <laughs> um, okay. You actually also do better work when you are chasing perfection because your goals and your standards are higher so you the work that you do and what you put into it is quality it really is when it comes to renovation as well when you are renovating your house um this is what it comes to mind because this is what we've been doing um, in this house since we moved in and in the previous house we were renovating a little bit but it was a brand new one so it wasn't much that needed to get done but here we're literally renovating replacing walls redoing things and uh, both my husband and I were perfectionists and I feel like every single human being is a perfectionist and maybe not in every area of their life but in certain areas so I am a perfectionist and sometimes being a perfectionist it can cause us to take longer to get there because we are so focused and hyper focused on the details and the quality of whatever it is that uh that we're doing make sure that you know we have the standard and we gotta make sure that we meet that standard and then some so quality work means aiming for perfection can result in high quality outputs we all um feel great when we decide that we're going to be doing this and we reach that and it feels great and it looks great and we can be proud of that and reminding ourselves to celebrate it um, it the journey towards perfection fosters personal growth and personal development because we are then we know that in order for us to get to that next level of perfection we need to be a different person that we need to learn something or many somethings or overcome something or break through something in order for us to get to that next level of what we want in order for you um to lift 200 pounds you need to first learn how to lift weight properly and then start with the weight that you can lift before you can jump to lifting 250 or a thousand pounds you need to work in stages and levels to identify this is how much i can do right now this is how much i can lift right now and what's going to be the next one next one will be about let's say 25 percent more so what do you need to do in order for you to get to the 25 percent more and be comfortable there and then after that, what's the next 25%? What do you need to do? Who do you need to become in order for you to get there and stay there comfortably? And you will know when you're comfortable uh, because you start to feel uncomfortable. You, you feel uncomfortable first and then you feel comfortable. And after you feel comfortable, you start to feel uncomfortable again because you're, we feel uncomfortable in our comfort zones as well. And that's a call to go to the next level to do more, to be more. Uh, we also become creative. We come up with new ideas, with new things, um, where, you know, new solutions to the challenge, new solution towards that perfection that we want, new solution towards the goal. And this is the positive part of chasing perfection, that we become more and more creative or highly creative. We become precise. And what we do and uh, we focus on success 
We focus on achievements, on things that we did and not on the things that we didn't do. And this is where the good girl, she would be going into the punishing zone of herself where she might focus more on the things that she didn't do, the things that she should have done, could have done, and beating herself up. But when you start working through that mold and remolding the good girl in, in a uh, positive way, and the way that you're meant to be that good girl, is that you celebrate your successes and you feel good about them and then that's not to say that you don't see where you can do better and you don't see the failures you definitely do but you see them in a positive way you see them in and you see them and you feel them as oh i'm so excited they're going on my list and i'm going to be doing these things now right it becomes that that weight that you're excited to lift the next uh the to the next level to the next level to the next level to your 25 percent that you're ready to lift um, now the negative ones i already mentioned quite a few is where you find yourself procrastinating this is where the good girl mold starts to seep through and i have been there and i have done that and it was it felt like torturing myself and it felt like being my own bully and it was the definition of a mental prison where I just continued to imprison myself and punish the prisoner that was in there which was me uh, you can find yourself procrastinating that's the negative consequences of chasing perfection fear of imperfection Fear of not being good enough, a fear of not being perfect enough um, tends to keep us stagnant and not do what we have decided or chose that we wanted to do. Um, avoidance type of behavior as well. It can cause anxiety. It can trigger anxiety where... It also goes into based on our past experiences that, you know, I've tried this, I've done that, and um, this is how it worked out. So the past experience is used. This is what anxiety is. It's us trying to see the future and trying to create some kind of a vision or level or expectation of perfection. And we can start working towards it because initially we feel excited, we feel motivated and fired up. But then anxiety creeps up based on our past experiences where we struggle to see and feel that future with that expectation that we set up for ourselves. Um, we also tend to, when we're feeling good and excited and we're chasing that perfection or that next level, we tend to reach burnout because when we set plans and decide on what we want to do and how we want to do it, deep down there's some expectation of it's going to happen like this. And because we're so excited, we over plan. And we overpromise ourselves or maybe other people around us of what we can do within this time frame. And this is often why the burnout um, takes precedence in our body, take, takes over our body, that we have we have overpromised, we have been overexcited or overly enthusiastic of what we wanted to do. And we're not checking um, up with ourselves and our, our goals and our plans of how realistic is it to do all of these things. Laser focus is what is the, um, how do I put it? it? Laser focus has been the driver of everything that I have achieved and done in my life. And that is a muscle. It is a skill, especially uh, when living with ADHD, 
because it's so easy to get distracted to start this project, start that project, start that project, and to not complete any of them. And the anxiety can come from all these projects from the past that I have started, that I have done, and I have not followed through, and I have not completed them. That this uh, the state of who I am comes through that how can I who am I now to do this project and actually to follow through on that project just the completing of a project can feel and can cause anxiety it can cause to feel burnout or overwhelm or lead to self-criticism and that is coming from that good girl mold because the good girl has been taught to stay in her place to stay in her box and not to peep not to go that way not to stir up the pot and not to step on anyone's toes and not to outshine anyone and that does not feel good that's why you know as you guys can see i have this book here that I've uh, I've read why good girls don't get ahead because they're staying in that box and they're not allowing themselves to that's the gist of this book but gutsy girls do so the good girl mold itself is great but then how do you bring the guts into it gotta figure that out uh, Rebecca says it causes anxiety because we're not living our truth 100% and we might not even know what our truth is at this point because of the good girl mold of what we were told the truth was for us and how we're supposed to be living our life. And that's why you can feel out of alignment because we're living somebody else's truth and not our own. Uh, and then Rebecca said, oh yes, burnout. I believe it is related to moon cycle of female cycle. We have time of momentum and time of rest and pondering yes i also add the masculine and the feminine to that as well because we go through our the moon cycles our own uh, monthly cycle as well and then not just that the season cycle it's masculine and feminine there's certain cycles that are masculine which means doing and doing and doing and feminine means being and having that balance between doing and being can cause us to feel um or going to self-criticism because we're living in a world that is masculine and that is driven by the masculine where it's do 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 anywhere we look everyone seems to be doing something and achieving and succeeding at something where how realistic is that it's important to have that balance of doing and being so we don't reach burnout so we don't feel like a failure so we don't have that fear of failure which is another negative side effect um or outcome or consequence of chasing perfection that we sometimes are uh the the phrase brainwashed comes through when we're so brainwashed by the external world especially through social media how we're supposed to be living and it's supposed to be go 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 do 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 and how there's women that have um they have family they have kids they have a house to take care of they have two or three businesses and then they still find time to go hang out with friends and they still have time for self-care and they put the portray this this image of their life how it's so perfect but in the reality it is not in reality they're struggling to find a time for themselves they're struggling to find time for their friends they're barely sleeping barely eating to be able to manage all of these businesses and all of these endeavors and they barely have time for their family and they're going through a lot of internal turmoil feeling like they're not good enough and they're still chasing the perfection what we see is not what is the reality. What you perfect example, you see you watch movies. And in the movie, everything like you don't see how the movie's created. You don't see um how in order for one scene to be recorded and created that looks perfect, perfect and has this all these parts to it, it might have taken 
took them six hours to put that one small scene together to make sure that everything is in place because they're chasing perfection. They're making sure that whatever you're seeing on screen in this movie and the show and that the narrative that they're um, getting through, the message they're getting through is what they want you to see, what they want you to hear. But you don't see what happens behind the scenes. In this room, for example, it might look uh, might look and appear that it's a perfect setup, a perfect room, everything is just amazing room and everything, but you don't see that I don't have ceilings in here, that I see the wires from the top. You don't see the pipes because this is a basement that is not done. I bring you in and show you what I want to show you. And that is with perfection as well. This is my definition of perfection. And I even, and, and I'll, since we're talking about my office and perfection, I'll use an, another example where I caught myself uh, looking at this office and deciding that I am going to reorganize and I'm going to redo my office, that I don't want to wait. Uh, I want to have it as nice as I can in the way that I want it. But, uh, I did not take the time to figure out what I wanted because I've already took the time and I set it up. And I also recognized through this process that I was going through that this is not the right time. Being realistic, is this what I want right now? No. By when would I want it? Well, I would want it when we start doing the basement because I have no problem with the way the ceilings are. I have no problem with the way the room is already set up because it's... It's actually perfect the way it is. I recognize that in my office, there's already perfection. And all I did was I changed, I had a pillow here before. I changed the pillow to this picture. That's all I did. And now I'm like, oh, perfect. I changed it up. If it's a little bit different, I don't want to do anything else. Now I have reached a level of perfection. When I start to feel um, unbalanced with the office, with this office, then I will tweak something else that will help help me to feel like it's at a perfect level again. This is the journey of perfection. This is the chase of perfection and recognizing that I don't go I don't have to do it all right now. It's just what is the one thing right now or two or three or five things right now that I could do that will be that new level uh, the new standard of perfection for my office and it was this picture and putting away and organizing some of the things that i have brought into this office to put them where they belong and also that was a reminder for me to uh, continue with the habit of following through if i say i'm gonna do this meaning uh, if I say that I'm bringing this, uh, let's say this book down, that I'm going to bring this book down and not just leave it on the table, not leave it on the counter, leave it on the floor, but put it exactly where it belongs. And I have my books color coded. So put it where that book belongs, where it fits in and not do it later. This whole thing, do it later. It's either now or put it for maybe. Or if it's for later, schedule when that's going to happen. So that way I continue to chase perfection in a positive way and not a negative way. So I feel good about it and not feel drained by it. And at the same time, checking in and readjusting that level of perfection. Instead of having that massive high standard of, I want to reorganize everything and restructure my office to, actually, I don't want to. Not yet. We're not there yet. There's other things that are more of a priority, and that's not it. Um, it can also put a strain on a relationship, relationship with yourself and with people in your life as well. Because when you have, especially when you have high standards in a relationship, and whether the other person knows or doesn't know, it could put a strain. So checking in with the reality of this expectation of perfection. And readjusting it accordingly. Um, because uh, when we are chasing perfection, we can tap into feeling overwhelmed, feeling stressed, feeling anxious, the, dealing with that self-criticism. It is very normal 
to feel impaired when it comes to decision making, when it comes to even taking action or doing something, we feel impaired because there's lack of clarity. And it comes from fight or flight uh, state. It comes from feeling um, high expectations of ourselves and not feeling good enough. And it's stress. It's stress reaction. When we feel stressed, when we feel overwhelmed, when we don't feel like we're not good enough, it clouds our mind, it clouds our thinking, so we're less likely to go and do something. And then another one, I'm sure you heard this one, it's um, like analysis by paralysis. So having this perfection standard that we can feel paralyzed due to lack of clarity, due to overwhelm, due to um, the self-criticism, anxiety, or avoidance behavior that we can feel paralyzed by this new standard of perfection because there's a lot more, a lot more steps that we got to do and overcome in order for us to get there. We're not here jumping from zero to hero. We're here jumping from zero to 10%. To 25% until we get to that 100% small digestible jumps bite-sized pieces in order for us to get to where we get want to get to like with this office small digestible bite-sized pieces what can I do now that is going to help me to re-identify my level of perfection my my standard of perfection and and go and do it so that way I feel good and I feel accomplished and then celebrating that um uh, you also will experience missed opportunities because you're having that cloud clouded mind clouded thinking clouded experiences um burnout anxiety you know fight or flight the stress reaction of course we're not gonna notice opportunities because we're just feeling too much and we can't recognize that we we won't even recognize them because by recognizing them that means that they will end up going on one of the lists that we have as the next thing to do and next thing to accomplish to experience I'm like mm, we don't want that so naturally our brain will block those things off so not to add to the current state of being current state of mind uh, of course you're also not gonna feel very creative because there's a lot of things happening but at the same time you can go and choose one area of your life that you enjoy uh, it will be like a self-care practice uh, go and do something where you can express your creativity but you also enjoy and love doing it so it's going to make you feel good and you can tap into um, or reignite that creativity where that level of perfection will either increase or decrease and you become more clear and know exactly what you want or what you don't want and the last one is you when you are when you're chasing perfection you might find yourself and this is where it's like a double-edged sword it's in a way positive and at the same time it's negative where you can find yourself feeling or needing or being um, in control or excessive control where you need to control every little part every little aspect and if it doesn't work out then you can punish yourself or other people this is where the relationships can um, can suffer as well when you decide this is what you're going to be doing this is how it's going to be and you hyper focus and you become so excessive with controlling it that what is going to happen if you don't get there if you don't achieve that if you don't experience that hey Anna how are you doing thanks for hopping on here and commenting uh, Anna says perfection is a positive way uh, perfection in the positive way sounds like an idea of mastery orientation where you know life is a journey 
and you never really reach mastery. It's a process of getting closer and closer to our true authentic self. 100% perfectly said. It is mastery orientation and recognizing that it is a journey and learning to be accepting of what becomes part of the journey. Good, the bad, the ugly, all of that. It is part of life experience and going with the flow. But at the same time, recognizing what is not in the flow anymore and not holding on to it and letting go when it does not fit anymore. Uh, Rebecca's practice makes perfect. Uh, baby steps are okay too. Yeah, practice makes perfect and baby steps are totally okay. Baby did not, a child does not learn how to run right away. They learn how to take little tiny little baby steps. And that's why it's important for all of us to figure out this is what we want next. This is what the next ideal, next level of mastery or perfection that we are after. And what is the one small little thing that you can do today? What's the next small thing that you can do tomorrow? And the next and the next tiny little bite-sized pieces so it does not feel like a, um, a lot. Uh, you can't eat an elephant in one sitting. Uh, sometimes these um, these next things that we want to chase, the perfection that we want to chase, these goals, these dreams, can feel like an elephant and it can feel like a lot, overwhelming. By reminding ourselves we're not here to have it all at once, we're not here to eat the whole elephant in one sitting, but one little bite at a time. And of course, not an invitation to go and eat an elephant, obviously. <laughs> Just using that as an example. Um, and then uh, Rebecca says, sometimes we can jump. Sometimes we can take a baby step. Exactly. Depending on what it is. Seize the moment. Seize the momentum. Yeah. It, it depends on what it is that we are after. Sometimes, like you said, we can jump from one thing to the next. And other times it will be just little steps until we get enough confidence under our belt that we are ready to maybe jump from that point on to the next thing. Uh, recognizing where we are and where we're trying to go and at the same time being realistic with who we are and what it will take us as an individual to get to that place and that point. So that is all that I have for you guys. Thank you very much for being on here with me with today's topic of uh, what happens when we chase perfection and what role does your good girl mode play in that chase? I would love to hear what is your one biggest takeaway from today's video. That your aha moment, your big realization and what are you going to do with it? It's a two part question. What is your big aha moment realization? And then the second part is, what are you going to do with it today? So you can have a better tomorrow and a new you tomorrow that you get to step into. Um, other than that, thank you for being on here with me. I can see there was Rebecca on here. Debbie came on. Anna was on here. Helen uh, hopped on. Kimberly was on here. Hey, Kimberly. And I think there was somebody else I saw, but... I don't see it now. Thank you, everybody, for being on here, for tuning in, for listening, for probably, hopefully, taking notes for yourself and for your next level of yourself and your evolution and your future and deciding on what you're going to be doing in a realistic way that is achievable and feels good. That when we do small little things, the goal here is not jump from a to Z. The goal here is to go through the journey and enjoy the journey and feel good about being on this journey and recognizing that that is how we're supposed to be and that we're not here trying to skip any steps. We're here going step by step, step by step and being completely okay with it. Um, so once again, I want to remind everybody, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, that uh, we are starting our Breaking Free from the Good Girl Mold Challenge. It's a five-day challenge, and we have a separate group for it. 
so everyone who is dedicated to the challenge is going to be part of this challenge if you're not in the group and you want to be part of the challenge come and join it um anna actually shared the link right here in the comments so Thank you, Anna. That's perfect. So you can go and join the challenge. You don't have to search for the group. It's right there in the comments and join the group and start. Um, we'll, we'll welcome you and there's going to be steps in there um, that will take you through and uh, I will be available and taking you through every day of the week, Monday to Friday to help you get the best and the most out of this challenge. But that is all. Thank you for being on here. And until we see each other on Monday, whether on the challenge or live in this group, Heal the Unicorn, Emotional Healing and Spiritual Growth for Women at 1130, where I will be doing a card reading live or and we'll see each other in the challenge group, which is Breaking uh, Free from the Good Girl Mold, uh, Facebook group community so we'll see each other on monday and until then hope you have an amazing the rest of your week and until we see each other bye everybody